Yeah, right, guys, my name is Jake, and for my project, I chose to do Art Folks slash Garage in your seat. Right, to start off, I've just got a short little video just to like give you all an idea of what USC actually is. Four selections winning on your accumulator. And the final game, still two all. But with Betfair, you can now cash out for a profit, even if not all of your selections are winning. So do you? Don't you? With Betfair, you decide. So what UFC, what is UFC? So basically UFC is a fighting competition uh, which is based in the United States. And UFC is a short term for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. It's the largest mixed martial arts company in the world and it hosts most of the top ranked fighters in the sport and it produces events worldwide. worldwide. So when was it formed and why? Well UFC was for its first formed um, in November 1993 uh, in Devon, Colorado. And the purpose of the event was basically to bring in a number of different type of fighting styles and get them to compete against each other to find out which was the most successful and effective fighting style. And what are the different styles used and what did it lead to? Well, in UFC there's a number of different fighting styles and it includes styles such as boxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Sambo, wrestling, Muay Thai, Karate, Judo and many more. And then, due to there being a number of different fighting styles um, that being involved in the competition, because the fighters knew that they didn't like the upper hands on each other, and some people had more effective styles than others, they began to adopt new like skills and techniques what they could use for help bring them as a better performer. Um, and then, because every, a couple of years later, when everyone started picking up more techniques of their own from different sorts of styles. Um, no one has just one basic style, it was a mixture and all everything. And then due to this, it is what this led to what people call today modern day mixed martial arts. Um, the, the fighters were separated into eight different body in eight different weight divisions based on their own personal body weight. Aims and objectives. What I hope to achieve. Well, from your project, I want to find out if it is possible to be able to come overcome 
eye gouging in pokes in UFC. And then um, I want to try and find out as well how much has actually changed the sport itself. So for like example, how many rules would have to be changed, how much the gear that they use, like the equipment, how much that would have to change. And then how will this affect UFC? And then the, what have you done is, um, I think personally, that if it says they can get to them, from what I'll be able to find out is I think that it'll give the sport more of an equal chance between the fighters. Um, yeah, it'll make, it'll make the fight more fair. And then um, if it says that the, the, the negative side is, sorry, but if it says that the gear and equipment has changed, then it'll be a lot it'll be a big change for the fighters because they're used to just having the normal gloves but how much will they have to adapt to be able to get used to the equipment and I got me a lecture review key findings from the research and how it links into the topic but all fighters in UFC should wear their gloves weighted from 4 to 6 ounce this weight might change depending on how big the athlete's hands are like if they've got enormous hands they'll have heavier gloves. If it isn't the small, they've got smaller hands, they'll have lighter gloves. Uh, when a UFC fighter's coming up, the uh, fighters aren't able to use their own gloves. Before the fight, they get given um, a pair of gloves from that organized the company. Sorry. Uh, they do this, they don't want to use their own gloves just in case they've like, tampered with them in any way and the, the gloves will be checked again just before the fight and when they go in the ring. If it, normally in UFC, if an eye gouge is used at any time in the fight, then the, right, the fight will be stopped and the fight will be disqualified. But obviously, the same in every sport, some athletes do cheat and they do manage to get away with it. So, and it, it is quite, there's only one ref in the ring and things can like, miss a blind eye sort of thing. Um, most fighters will try a link in with an eye gouge used on purpose, like when they're having a little bit of a scuffle and grappling on the floor. And they, they do this to basically give themselves an advantage because it's giving their opponents a limited amount of vision from what they can see due to what's happened. And then, from what I did manage to find out as well from the literature review, um, is I got managed to find an interview that a fighter from UFC had where he thinks the problem with eye gouging is the design of the gloves and he gave us personal thoughts and experience on it so the fighter was Cub Swanson and he's a featherweight contender um, he gave his personal thoughts and experience he's had with the gloves what problems he found and then some of the experience he witnessed he stated uh, that the gloves have a square design to start off um, and due to the square design of the gloves, when your hand is inside the glove and it's naturally relaxing, it does leave your fingers slightly open. So when you put your hand down, I'll show you, I'll show you. Um, so when your hand's in the glove, it does slightly leave your fingers a little bit open. And the, the design of the gloves, from what, why they were designed with open fingers, is because they give fighters more of a better chance when they're grappling on the floor so they can grab the fingers and lock on the fingers so they can give submissions. He thinks that this is he thinks the pace that this is why so many people get poked in the eye during a fight, whether it's on purpose or an accident. Um, he states that his personal thoughts that the glove should be changed to a more rounded shape, which will reduce once the gloves have had more of a rounded shape, it will reduce the how much your fingers are left open, like the gap in between your fingers. Um, but it still will leave a little bit of a gap when the circle, when the rounded off gloves have been made for it won't be as much as they were before. He also thinks that the padding on the side of the gloves should be changed a little bit as well because it leaves a lot of padding and game on the side of your hand. And they it should be curved more around the glove. And I've got my thoughts on this. Personally, um, I do think that Cub Swanson's thoughts on the gloves, I think that he's spot on really. Um, because I managed to get my hand on some gloves myself and had a look at what he was talking about and as soon as I put them on I actually noticed what he was on about so if I just put a glove on and show you
what he's actually talking about is due to the square design of the gloves, how the padding is, when your fingers are relaxed it does leave your fingers quite open. So when you're moving your arms around that actually could be the reason why. And then due to the padding on the side as well, because it's stretched out a lot, it stretches your fingers out even more and leaves them, well obviously you can see quite open. You're on nine minutes. Nine? Yeah. Method, what method I'll be using. Well, for my project, I'm going to use content analysis. Um, and I've chosen this method and approach due to that because I can't exactly go out and. Uh, oh, sorry, I've chosen this method because my information is based on case studies and interviews, and it's mainly equipment equipment based. Uh, how, will this approach help, how will this approach help to achieve my aims and objectives in my project? Uh, well, personally, I think it would be fairly straightforward to find the information because I am aware that the UFC organisation are actually planning on to change the gloves and don't know about doing that very soon um, and then I won't exactly able to go out and do interviews with people because it's mainly research based, it's the equipment. And then how I analyse the data and why have I chosen this approach? Well for analysing my data I'm going to use cross cross-referencing between two different types of sources. Um, then I've chosen this approach due to being able to pick and choose <coughs> what I need. Anyone got any questions?